Hello everyone, my name is Deepak. I am working as assistant professor in School of Engineering, RIMT University. Today we are going to discuss laws of motion. In today's presentation, we will discuss concept of momentum and inertia, Newton's first law of motion, Newton's second law, third law, as well as significance of these laws of motion. So we will discuss these things one by one. Let's start. Now first of all, before introducing the laws, we should know the concept of moment and inertia. Moment is a term which is associated with motion of body and mathematically it is given by the product of mass and velocity. So basically it is a vector quantity and its direction is same as that of velocity of our body. Since it is a product of mass and velocity, therefore its SI unit are kilogram meter per second. And from the formula, it is very much clear that momentum of a body depends upon its mass. So a body with heavy, uh, heavy mass body will have higher momentum and lighter body will have low value of the momentum. Next thing is inertia. Inertia is property of body by virtue of which it opposes any change to its state of rest or uniform motion or simply we can say it is inability of body to change its state. It means that if a body is at rest, it will continue to be in state of rest or if it is in motion, it will continue to, state, uh, continue to be in state of motion. Again, inertia of body depends upon mass of the body. So heavy body will have a higher inertia as compared to lighter body. So let's start with Newton's first law. Newton's first law states that a body continue to be in state of rest or uniform motion in straight line unless it is compelled by some external force to change its state of rest or uniform motion. Means a body doesn't change its state unless some external force is not applied on it. This law is also known as law of inertia and another significance of this law is it defines the concept of force. In mechanics we define the force as a push or pull which either change or ch tend to change the state of rest or uniform motion of a body or simply we can say force is that quantity which state uh, which change the state of a body means if you want to change the state of body from rest to motion or motion to rest then you need some force. Okay, next is some daily example from first law. A book will remain on table unless it is lifted by some external force. Means when you apply some force, you change the state of uh, book from rest to motion. Similarly, if a body is moving in straight line with constant speed, and if you want to increase or decrease the speed of a body, a force has to be applied in direction opposite to the direction of motion. If you want to decrease the speed of motion, if you want to increase the speed, then you have to apply the force in the direction of motion. Some another examples from law of inertia, when a running horse suddenly stops, a rider falls forward. This is because lower part of the body of rider continue to be in state of, comes to state of rest while the horse stop, while the upper part of the body tends to be in state of motion. Therefore, a rider, uh, rider falls forward. Similarly, when uh, if, we, if we take an example of long jump, athlete runs some distances before taking a long jump. It is because when athlete runs some distance, velocity is acquired by athlete and that velocity is added to velocity of jump as a uh, consequently athlete will have a long jump. Another examples include when we hit a carpet with stick to remove the dust. On hitting the carpet, uh, carpet with stick, fibers of the carpet come into motion and they move. While the dust particle doesn't move due to their state of inertia and they will fall down. Another example shaking of a mango tree, 
when we shake the branch of mango tree mangoes fall down while we are shaking the branches of tree due to of iner uh, due to inertia mangoes remain at rest while the branches comes in motion and hence consequently mangoes will fall so this cover our first law next is newton second law again very important law as per definition this law state that rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to applied force and that change takes place in the direction of application of force whenever a force is applied on body its momentum will change so uh, first law will give the measure uh, concept of force second law gives the measurement of force and by newton second law we found the formula for force as force equal to mass into acceleration or we can easily write it as f equal to ma now what are the importance of second law of motion first of all this law will give us the measurement of force from this law as the formula suggest f equal to ma we can conclude that force is directly proportional to acceleration and hence we can say if the force is greater than acceleration will be greater or if we produce a greater acceleration in body this means a huge amount of force is acting on the body on the another hand if body is moving in a uniform moving with a uniform velocity then its acceleration will be zero and hence the force will be zero hence we can say that in order to move the body in with uniform motion no external force is applied okay next our third law of motion newton's last law of motion this law states to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction or action is equal and opposite to reaction whenever some action is done on body there will be equal and opposite reaction now what are various example of this law number 1 when we when a rubber ball is struck against a wall the ball bounces back due to reaction of the ball so reaction of the wall second in order to swim a man pushes water backwards with his hands whenever a man pushes his hands backward equal and opposite reaction is provided by the water and due to that reaction a man moves forward now what are the important points that we have concluded from the third law number 1 a single and isolated force cannot exist this is because as per the definition of the law when there is an action there will be equal and opposite reaction second force in nature always occurs in pair theek okay, hai we already discussed one is action another is reaction now third and most important point action and reaction never act on a same body one body uh, there will be action on one body and reaction on the another body and since action and reaction being acting on different bodies they will never cancel each other because they are producing their effect on two different bodies not on the same bodies and uh, this law is applicable to rest as well as in uh, as well as in motion so a moving body as well as a body in at rest both of the bodies will obey this law now what are the what are the significance of newton's law of motion these law are very useful for analysis of motion of a body you can find the acceleration acting on a body force acting on body its initial velocity final velocity whatever you want to uh, conclude from these laws second if we talk about newton first law this law tells us that motion cannot change without application of an unbalanced force it means whenever an unbalanced force is required there will be change in the motion of body second law tell us that force acting on a uh, sorry second law is helpful in finding out the force acting on a body because it gives us the formula for calculating the force and last third law that 
third law state that all forces in universe exist in pairs one is action and other is reaction and no force is isolated in this universe so basically these laws are very useful in study the motion of a body these laws are equally applicable in physics as well as in engineering mechanics thank you